Hello, in this video we will simulate and demonstrate communication analysis, import, automatic import from Excel and visualization in sequence diagram. So the actual interaction is captured in the data which comes as Excel. So as you can see here, the messages, each line is separate message with some parameters including the timestamp, including the system from which that message was sent and to which it was sent and some other characteristics of the message. So all of the data can be actually automatically converted to the model and will sh and analyzed in the model and we'll see how that is captured into the sequence diagram, auto-generated sequence diagram. As you can see here, communication is actually between systems. So systems, different systems sending those messages could be as, as much systems uh, uh, as we care about and um, here in the model we have some rotor or arbiter which will actually capture the data from Excel and uh, will transfer the messages to be sent by specific systems in order not that systems would need to do it by themselves you know which would be like distributed thing for for them you know and um, uh, now what's happening is uh, all of those systems, they have just simple logic to wrote the message, whatever they receive from the arbiter, just to write a state, like for example, uh, uh, here those behaviors of each system, and the arbiter is capturing, you know, the reading from Excel. So uh, Excel read is, is never as easy. We just have instance table and uh, the Excel uh, file could be like uh, in the folder together with the project or inside of the project. Uh, and we read from a file and we get the same data here as you can see here timestamp uh, system from where to send to uh, and which uh, from which to send uh, and um, uh, also automatic generation of sequence diagram as you can see here now let's run this uh, model we see here auto generated uh, sequence diagram and all the messaging going through sequence diagram is capturing everything you see like time property change and the send signal actions with the parameters which are sent and we can check that it's correctly sending here in the data file in the internal block diagram as you can see here which message parameters uh, based on parameters we can see here and this animation slows down capturing of the data, but if we will uh, close the diagram or if it will speed up, we'll just get final result as here. Now this final result includes all the data, including the arbiter, which we could delete. Uh, and then we will get communication between the systems with the correct timestamp. As you can see here, the timestamp, it's not only that it's taken from the, as a parameter, but also it's actual timestamp captured. And as you see, it's kind of correct based on the time which should be as a parameter. And it's also time as actually the message was sent. And uh, now uh, we could just ignore the arbiter actually in the, our simulation config. And in that case, we would not get it at all, you know, so ignored uh, lifelines. Let's pick the domain uh, arbiter. In that case, it will be ignored. Re uh, record value change, ignore. And time step, let's not ignore because we want to see that timestamp is actually correctly captured. And let's, let's run the simulation again. Stop, run again. And let's see just in the sequence diagram. That's it. So we got all the seven messages, as we can see here, seven messages, and we can ch check that it's all correct, but, uh, and also do some model manipulation based on that additional ones, you know, but as we can see here, we have uh, all the timings, timings, uh, are the same like 17 30 40 34 17 30 34 time of the message sent and the parameter when it was supposed to be sent based on the data is the same so all the communication actually is in the model and this diagram is created based on the model so the architecture of the system corresponds the 
actual data which we received from the Excel and we ran it. And in case we would have different architecture, the data would show and the actual message, uh, messaging in sequence diagram would show that it's different. Again, we could run the, some analysis on top of that, but now we got that captured as we see here. Yeah, so uh, now a little bit about the, the logic, how this is done. Actually, it is quite simple and uh, elegant approach. We can uh, see in the arbiter uh, uh, some uh, dedicated uh, read from uh, from uh, Excel a couple of lines. So first line is just reading uh, the data from Excel, just like standard thing. And then here we are assigning the value property, the properties based on that data, as you can see here, just like uh, item this uh, column, item that column, item this column, and so on to some properties. And then we can manipulate that in the model as a pins. So some of them comes as a pins. Some of them comes as a value properties if they are in the same context. And the time is actually another kind of nice thing. You know, we get the time from the Excel and we calculate the delta. And the delta we use as a duration constraint here. So this duration constraint is actually dynamic. Uh, dynamically updated and that's how we delay the message sent so the first message is sent like uh, delayed by like 14 hours 57 minutes actually in the simulation as you saw how fast simulation runs but it actually delays first one by 14 hours 57 minutes next one is delayed by 19 seconds and so on so some of them are delayed by eight seconds only and so it can delay you know by that time and also can delay in and even print but print results like immediately and so that's the arbiter we can check how that the delta works but before that actually what is in those uh, uh, systems one two and three it is actually very simple the signal is sent with the parameters to system one two or three depending uh, where we want to get this, where the message should be sent from, right? So as you can see here, this arbiter is actually routing the signal based on the two system, uh, no, no, from system, from system based from system parameter, it's uh, actually routes the signal to this system one, two or three, two or three. And then when the signal is received by the system, for example, system one, it is very simple it get we get the signal and uh, again based on that system 2 is it system 3 is system 2 right to system we sending to system 3 or system 2 the same signal and just putting the data into that signal as parameters very very simple very nice and the same one for system 2 and same for system 3 as you see um, now um, here this um, delta let's see how the delta works let's run this simulation again let's go to arbiter as we can see here it reads the parameters and passes the from system and all other parameters and you see like now delta is the first uh, first time uh, interval this first time interval is those uh, 14 hours 59 min 57 minutes and so on but they are converted into seconds the next time interval when the next message will arrive will be just a delta between those uh, previous time and next time because we need to delay and send it right so let's see how that will work and we can as you see monitor what's happening what are the parameters and so on here let's see how the delta will be calculated 90 seconds only but when we take a look at auto generated sequence diagram and this one is the new one we see that actually it is capturing those times as absolute times when the message arrived like 32 seconds 59 seconds 19 seconds in between uh, and uh, so on so uh, that's that's the logic behind that and that's how we convert the excel into auto-generated uh, inter in interaction in sequence diagram and we could test even actually is this interaction correct based on the whatever we received from excel and based on the system architecture which we have here so this model was um, uh, kindly shared by brian moberlane 